For this video, we're going to water solubilize some quantum dots using amphiphilic polymers according to the reference shown above. But since this is a video tutorial, we're going to get into a lot more detail. We're starting out with CAD selenide overcoated with zinc sulfide quantum dots prepared according to the reference shown above. And I am going to work with just half a gram of growth solution. And that's because I know how many quantum dots there are in every gram of growth solution and I don't like to try to water solubilize more than half a gram at once. It tends to hurt the phase transfer yields if I, if I use too many dots at once. I'm also preparing CAD sulfide, uh, it's coated with zinc sulfide as shown here. And in this case I don't need to be as careful with how much I use, I'm not being as careful with how much I'm weighing out and that's because I'm not sure how many quantum dots there are per growth solution of this particular sample but still I try not to work with too much at once. Okay back to CAD selenide, here I'm adding a small amount of isopropanol as a co-solvent so that I can mix it with the non-solvent, uh, usually methanol but here I used ethanol just because it was right in front of me. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a really nice precipitation and I'll zoom in and you can see that here. It's going to look like a, it looks like a snow globe. Maybe it's a little hard to see. Now that's a really nice precipitation. So the dots are precipitating quite well, but there's also a large amount of excess ligands, which later on in the process is going to cause a little bit of a problem. But of course we have a solution to that. CAD sulfide is quite a bit easier because it's coated with oleic acid ligands. And for this one, all I have to do is just add uh, excess uh, isopropanol. And you see I just filled that all the way to the top. And I just shake that up and those QDs uh, precipitate quite readily just on their own. Now what I do is I'm going to centrifuge the samples. And of course I need to weigh out a counterweight whenever I centrifuge anything. And I put those samples across from each other. Whenever I turn it on, I leave my hand on the machine just for a second to make sure that the balance is good, otherwise it could injure me. Now you can see here, uh, it's a little hard to tell, but the supernatant is, is relatively clear. I know it looks a little cloudy in the video, but it was actually perfectly clear. And for CAD selenide, uh, the supernatant is clear, but you can see that actually those mostly aren't quantum dots, that's a paste. That's an alkylamine phosphonic acid uh, paste that I've got to extract the quantum dots. Uh, they're embedded in it. Now to do so, I first remove the supernatant and then I'm going to add some hexane, not too much, just about two mils. And then I'm going to break up that paste. And sometimes I have to use a lot of force to do so. I'm going to break up the paste so the hexane can extract the QDs from that paste. Here you see that after I've centrifuged it, the paste has lost some color and the quantum dots are well dispersed in the, in the hexane. Now again, it may be a little hard to tell from the video, but the QDs are, uh, it's like stained glass. It's, it's, uh, it's quite a nice looking solution. It's not cloudy at all. And what I do is I decant that into another vial very carefully. I do not allow any of the paste to transfer into the second vial. I've also pre-weighed that second vial, by the way. Now, the next thing we have to ask ourselves is how greedy are we? Because you see there's still a little bit of QDs left in that paste. And if I want to get them out, you can see I'm adding about another two mils of hexane. I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to shake the sample, break up the paste, centrifuge, and collect the hexane with dots in it. Um, that works well if the dots are relatively fresh. If the dots are old, usually you get just about all of them out on the first extraction. Okay, then what we do is we take the hexane with dots, add isopropanol and, and methanol or ethanol, centrifuge, and now you can see that we got a clean precipitation. The CAD sulfide has been centrifuged once and we've decanted off the supernatant. However, there's still some excess ligands, so we're going to wash those off just with some methanol or ethanol. We centrifuge it, and you can see the supernatant's nice and clear. We decant the supernatant, and we've got a pretty decent pellet of quantum dots at that point. And now we're going to dry it. We're going to dry it by attaching it to the Schlink line, and to do so, we put on a septic cap first. It's a little hard to get on there, but it's important because then uh, I know it has a good seal. The harder it is to get on there. And we're going to use a 21 gauge green needle to puncture the septa and attach it to the Schlink line. 
I usually use small gauge needles for this and that's because this part, this, this initial drying is, it's not problematic, but you really want to use a thin gauge needle when you're pulling off the solvent which comes next getting a little ahead of myself. Here we are attaching it to the slink line and one way that I know that it's that it's dry with this initial drying is that I have a pressure gauge attached to my slink line. Once the pressure has gone down to the equilibrium I know it's done. I try not to overly dry the sample because that seems to cause less dots to go into water later on. Of course we're also doing this with CAD selenide uh, the same way SEPTA with a green 21 gauge needle. I usually reuse the SEPTA in a needle for this initial drying and then later when I'll dry the sample in the chloroform polymer solution. Once the sample is dry, here what we're going to do is we're going to weigh it because I've actually already weighed the, the vial itself so the extra weight is just pure quantum dots. I'm recording that weight and then I have a little rule that I follow in terms of adding the amphiphilic polymer, I multiply the mass of quantum dots by 5 and that's how much polymer I add. The polymer that we're using is the rather ubiquitous 40% octalamine modified polyacrylic acid. The polyacrylic acid was originally 1800 molecular weight and you do have to synthesize this yourself. It's not terribly difficult but if you've never done synthesis before it can be quite challenging. Okay, so I've already figured out how much mass to add, and you, here you're going to see me do something that's not good chemical practice. What I'm doing is I'm weighing the polymer directly into the vial. Now I should be weighing that into a piece of whey paper or a little boat to get the weight just right, but in this case I don't need to because if I go a little over, which I'm pretty much guaranteed to go a little over, it actually helps the phase transfer yield uh, increase. Okay, once the polymer is added, now you see me adding chloroform and this part's crucial. You need to see the dots dissolve well into the chloroform. If the dots don't dissolve into the chloroform, if they seem like they're still precipitated, this isn't going to work. If you see that happen, what occurred is that too many ligands fell off in the initial precipitation process. And that you can't fix. You have to start over. Don't add too much non-solvent, that's the methanol or ethanol. Don't add too much if you have this problem, but you will have to start over. Okay, in this sample the dots dissolve pretty well in the chloroform, but the polymer isn't. Now that's typical too. Now to get the polymer, which is a little bit more polar to dissolve in the chloroform dot mixture, I added just a drop or two of methanol. No more than that, because methanol is also a non-solvent for the quantum dots. So here you see the quantum dots are going mostly in, but there's a little bit more that just needed some extra time to dissolve. Here's the CAD sulfide, and we're giving it the same treatment. Chloroform, make sure the dots dissolve, and then you'll see here that I had a little bit more of a problem getting the polymer to dissolve with this one. And you can see that, a little, I, I, I put it up to the camera, you can see that a little bit better. And again, the solution to that is to, add, is to polarize the solution with a little bit of methanol, just a drop or two. Now again, if you add too much, the dots will precipitate and you've destroyed the sample. This takes a little finesse and a little practice. So here, the dots have dissolved well in the chloroform, so that's a very good sign. But again, you can see a little bit of a close-up. You can see the polymer is not quite so happy. Add a little bit, just two drops of, of methanol, and the polymer will go right in. Sometimes I have to sonicate it and sometimes stir it a little bit, but if you find you have to do that to excess, something's wrong and you're probably not a good, you're not going to get a good phase transfer yield. Now here's a neat little trick. It turns out that the brightness in this chloroform polymer solution this is about what you'll see in water. Okay, so here we're going to pull off the solvent. This part locks the, the polymer, the amphiphilic polymer, the octalamine groups, with the quantum dot ligands that are also hydrophobic. So this is essential for forming a micelle that allows the dots to become soluble in water. Now there is one dangerous part about this process which is that, as you can see here, the sample might bump. It's still full of air. 
What happens is, is that I'll do a close up here and you can see that the polymer, as it dries, it forms a little bit of a skin on the surface. And that's kind of bad because when that skin breaks up, that's when the sample might bump. Sometimes the sample bumps very violently and if it does so, it can go all the way through the needle, up the tubing, and that's it. You've lost the sample. Now to prevent that from happening, I just tap on it. I, t I keep tapping on it and I do that kind of obsessively for the first few moments until the, all the air has, uh, has come out of the, the solvent. After that you should be safe and it'll dry normally and of course I like to check that it's still nice and bright, which of course it still is. Cat selenide gets the same treatment. Now I have to admit, this sample was unusual. It didn't bump at all. That's not normal, but I guess sometimes we get lucky. Here you see what it looks like after it's dry. You can see that the polymer is kind of crystalline and crusty and it's embedded with quantum dots. Now we have to get the quantum dots to go into water and to do that we push it a bit and we do that by adding strongly basic water, pH 13. The dots just need uh, some oomph to get into water at first. I don't add too much, just a mill or two of pH 13 water and then I fill the rest of the way up with just DI water. The solution is still quite caustic. The dots, if this process has gone well, just go straight into the water and you can see that here. I don't have to do too much, just stir it a little bit and the dots are going right in and you can probably even tell that they're quite bright. Yeah, not bad, right? Now, the only thing is though that the solution is quite caustic and has lots of excess polymer, so it's going to have to undergo dialysis. Here's the CAD sulfide and we've added some basic water and you can see that the polymer is a little slow to dissolve and that's actually why you have to add uh, some strong base at the very beginning. Now this sample was a little bit slow to dissolve. Sometimes I'll sonicate the sample, usually just for a minute or two. If you have to do more than that, something's not right and you're probably not going to get a good phase transfer yield. This sample, of course, will have to undergo dialysis just like the CAD selenide. But at the end of the day, you have a nice bright sample. A little bit of quantum yield is lost upon um, uh, after you do dialysis to lower the pH. The hydroxide in the, the solution is actually good for the dots. It makes them appear a little bit brighter. The last thing you do is dialysis with 100K molecular weight cutoff filters. We use centri centrifugal ones or you can use dialysis bags. And after that, you're ready to do some cell imaging.